Ocean, a professional astrologer, and this is the 2025 Leo forecast. So Leo overview for 2025. There's a lot of change with slow moving planets going into new signs. What does that mean for you? It means that you're going to feel a huge shift between 2025 and 2026 because these energies are going to begin. You're going to get a taste for them and then they're going to dip back into the signs that they're currently in. And only once 2026 is fully underway will you get that experience that life is definitely on a different track. So there are two outer planets that are moving into your house of travel, study, expansion. And this is Saturn and Neptune and they're going to dip in around May, June of 2025 you'll have them there for a few months and then they're going to go back into this area of your life into the sign of Pisces where they've been affecting a very deep transformation. So you've had Saturn there for the last two to three years. It's been asking you to transform, transform, transform. Sometimes that transformation has been painful always happened on a very deep emotional or physical level and you've had Neptune in that area of your chart for a very long time calling you to live a spiritual way of life calling you to examine things and as those two planets move into the new area of your chart you're going to feel a shift an opening perhaps something new to study, a postgraduate degree, something like that is going to come into your life. Perhaps you're going to finally be ready to consider traveling abroad again to expand your mind. This is not travel that I'm seeing for pure pleasure. It's travel to expand your soul to bring a new philosophy into your life because you're searching for something, you're searching for a deeper meaning. And you're also going to have a lot of action, Leo, in the second part of the year when Uranus, the planet that brings radical change, is going to leave your house of work where it's been active for about eight years, since around 2018, 2019. And it's going to enter into an area of your life which has to do more with groups, with friendships, with organizations. And the change there is going to feel pretty radical. But once again, you'll have that experience July, August, September, October, and then Uranus is going to dip back into your house of work. So you'll need to tie up loose ends, things that you've been working on, especially in the last six years or so. Finally, there's going to be a shift of Jupiter, our greater benefic into the sign of Cancer and that will again be only in the second part of 2025. This is going to awaken again a deeper spiritual longing in you which could manifest a new spiritual teacher and that teacher could be anyone who steps up to be your guide as you deepen the search for greater meaning in your life. You could also find yourself being a little bit more introspective than usual. We know as Leos, people see you as very extrovert, often you're on the world stage. But 2025 to 2026 really sees a quest for something more in your life. And if you're not that interested in deepening your spiritual search, what we could be seeing is deepening your knowledge base of the unseen. Maybe you're going to study astrology. Maybe you're going to study the night sky. Maybe you're going to take up a Tai Chi, a Qigong or a yoga teacher training. 
all the while that you're still working on your job and earning money because there's been a few delays in that over the last couple of years. There's been an erratic nature to work since 2018, 2019 with Uranus in that sign. Yes, there've been some really good surprises, some promotions, some job switches, but not an enormous amount of stability, which for you, Leo, is something that you usually enjoy in the workplace. You like it when you know where you stand at work and you know what kind of money you're bringing in. So that's going to settle in 2026 and work will become a little bit more constant. The middle half of this year is going to initiate that process. And really, I see you experiencing a lot of new energies after a pretty disruptive couple of years. So let's get into the forecast month by month, Leo. And always remember for you, the sun is extremely important. The sun is your ruler. It rules the heart in the human body. It rules the entire existence of this planet. And when the sun switches signs or hooks up with other planets, this is what is most affecting your forecast, Leo, because your body, your nature is intrinsically linked to that solar energy. So pay attention if you do listen to other forecasts or if you read the ephemeris, take note of what the sun is doing and that will guide your day by day. Leo, the year begins for you with the sun in a place in your chart, your solar house, which has to do with resting up, taking it easy, taking care of routine matters. I don't see you dashing about, particularly the first half of January. You want to be mindful of your health, taking it easy, just really enjoying the joys that January can bring whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you cozy it up at home in front of a fire, or you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you're taking a moment in the backyard to enjoy the sunshine, the sound of the birds. Take that time, you need it. Another reason I'm mentioning health, Leo, is you've got to slow down in your first house, bringing up issues, especially in the first few days of the year that have to do with stuff from the previous year. And this doesn't need to be anything serious. It could literally be that you've decided to take on a healthy eating plan as your New Year's resolution. So you're clearing out old stuff as the new year gets underway, or you're simply trying to introduce a new exercise routine and be more mindful of what are you doing throughout the day? Are you taking on too much? So really see the new year in gently. And after the sixth or seventh, you're going to feel a different shift where energy moves into your 12th house of spirit and deeper healing. And it's going to be there all the way until April. This is action planet Mars. And we want to use this energy for deep transformation. It might be a more quiet time for you than usual the first few months of the year. You might be wanting to take care of health issues that you've really been putting off forever. You know, it could be that um, slight pain that you feel in a certain part of your body and you always say, well, I'll deal with it sometime. Now is the time, the first few months of 2025. Great time to take care of this wonderful body that serves you so well. And the other energies that I'm seeing are, we also have Saturn, planet of structure, discipline, endurance, ambition, still hanging out in a quieter place of your chart. So you may not be that motivated, you know, to go out and take on the world on January 1st and listen to that. We all get our time to shine. We all get our time to pull back a little. And this is the time when the universe is saying to you, 
don't go 100% right now. The energy is building, 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 and you'll see as we go through this forecast that there are times when you really are coming out, you're feeling fabulous. So the suggestion is to take it easy and also to spend a lot of time if you are in a relationship or you are searching for that special person. There's a lot of energy going back and forth between yourself and somebody else. So perhaps the cosmos is saying to you either to spend time with the one you love, honor them, they may be going through an important transformation themselves, or to be out there and looking for that person who may be able to complete you if you are searching for a relationship. There's an abundant and generous full moon in the sign of Cancer, which is nurturing, caring for others. And that's going to take place in, again, that quiet place of your chart. So I see you with loved ones or with friends that are close friends that you really, really care about. This is not the time to be hanging out alone just because it's a deep and profound time for you doesn't mean that you're not supported by either close family or friends. You really have their love and that can be a very, very special full moon. You can celebrate a meal together and really bring that nurturing energy in. By the end of January, around the 29th, there's going to be a new moon in your house of partnerships. So if you are beginning a new relationship at this time, wonderful. And if you're in a, a marriage or a permanent partnership, this is a great time to refresh your relationship and to simply be so happy that you're alive, that you're together, and that there is much to look forward to. February is a really interesting month for you, Leo and Leo Rising, because for the first part of the month, you're dealing with issues that might have been left over since October of 2024. And then after February 24th, there's a definite shift. And what's going to happen then is whatever issues you are dealing with, they're going to begin the forward path to resolution. They might be spiritual issues, they might be health issues, they might be hidden secrets that came to light and that you've been dealing with things from, for example, an estate or things to do with parents, who knows, but whatever it is you've been dealing with since October of 2024, this now really gets going after the 24th of February. So be patient with yourself that first part of February. There's a lot of backward looking and going over things and trying to put all the dots and the pieces together. You will have blessings to help you and these are coming from Lady Venus, our beautiful lesser benefic and she will be traveling through your house of expansion, bringing joys. Maybe you decide to book a trip at this time. I don't see you traveling quite yet, although you may be, but this is a good time to plant that seed. You know, I'm planning a trip and you, you set it out and we'll speak about good times for that trip a little bit later on. The other thing I'm seeing there is a good time to go deeply into your studies. Some of you are students. This is the time to put your nose to the grindstone. You can get really good marks at this time and do really well. So don't be shy to, you know, give it your best. This is where the hardest part of the year is that all the work you're doing you need to really focus down now. There's also going to be a new moon right at the end of the month again. You'll notice that this year we have the full moons in the middle of the month and the new moons are happening at the end of the month which is a little bit uh, contrary to what we're used to but there will be this beautiful new moon happening in Pisces, the sign of dreams, the sign of hopes, aspirations, altruism. And that's a time where I see you lying in your hammock, dreaming your dreams and 
planting those seeds for what's going to emerge later in the year. March is a really active month. Things are happening, things are changing, and there's a lot to be mindful for. In particular, Leo, many of you are leaders. You are either your own boss in an organization, or you're leading some kind of group through work you know that you have that leadership quality. Maybe you're just a leader among your friends. Whatever the case, through the whole month of March, the way that we relate to people is going to be under fire. So you want to be very mindful because social relations could be a little bit less easy than usual. And when you're in a leadership position, you need to be aware of that. In other words, be extra careful before you say something that might hurt somebody. Be extra sensitive to the people on your team or those who work under you because you may say something that could cause offense to somebody. And while you are generally a very confident person, you may be dealing with people who have self-worth issues so just bring that into your subconscious for that time of year. March is a delicate time and we really need to be extra sensitive to those around us. The other thing that is so energetic about March is the two eclipses that everyone on the planet will experience but in different degrees and in different areas of their life. So for you, Leo, you're going to have the two eclipses in two different areas. The first one is the lunar eclipse, which is going to take place in an area of your life that has to do with resources. So you want to be aware of that because later on in the year, they're going to be two new moons in that same area, which is very unusual, and a solar eclipse. So when this first lunar eclipse of the year comes about at the full moon in Virgo, it's a good time to be aware of your financial situation. This is not a time to take financial risks. I know you have a generous heart and you tend to be the givers of your family, of your group, but be careful about resources during this time because they are put in the spotlight and it's a good time to discriminate. How do you spend your money? Are you giving and receiving in balance? Is there a way to get your finances more in order? That's really what's being asked of you at this eclipse and what may come to light. The other thing that could be highlighted around this time is your own self-esteem. Is there a check and balance that's needed? And are you shining that Leo light with quiet confidence in a way that is serving you and serving the needs of a higher world of which we are all part. Then we have this new moon in Aries right at the end of the month around the 29th and this is a very special energy Leo. It's taking place in that house of expansion, that house of religion, that house that makes you want to broaden your horizons and the day after the new moon, which is also a solar eclipse, Neptune is going to move into that area of your chart, bringing this yearning for spirit, this yearning for a guru, for a connection, for a deeper life. So I invite you on the last few days of March, be aware of what's going on. Are you being directed to hook up with someone? Are you being directed to go somewhere to plan a trip abroad for this deep seeking of knowledge, maybe to study somewhere? Be open and it's not a one day thing. As April gets underway, continue to be open to this Leo. Now throughout March, we've had a Mercury retrograde, we've had a Venus retrograde. That means our communication has been a little slow. 
our social relations have been a little slow or challenged. And we experienced that for the first part of April. Around the 7th of April, Mercury moves direct and starts to pick up speed. And you will experience that, Leo, because communication suddenly you know, gets into gear and while you might have had time to hang out with old friends and so on during March, April really picks up the pace and there gets to be a new focus on your work, on your job. The main energetic fulcrum of April is around the 13th of the month when there's a full moon in your house of neighborhood, community, brothers and sisters. So perhaps you're hanging out with one of them, they've come to stay, or you have something going on in the neighborhood, a new endeavor, or you've started to learn something new, you're interested, you've maybe started a whole new series that is teaching you step by step how to do something you've always wanted to do. Regardless, around that full moon, there is some kind of obstacle that you have to overcome or some kind of forceful energy coming in could be very vital in other words it could energize you but be mindful if you are hanging out with a brother or a sister don't get into arguments if you are working with your neighbors on a project maybe you're volunteering keep the energy low and channel this vitality that you're feeling into doing the right thing into being energetic in the right way. The other adjustment that's taking place on that 13th is that Venus is moving forward. So you will feel it's a day to adjust social relations. And for the rest of the month, whatever's been challenging, remember in March we spoke about being mindful to people who work under you. This is going to now ease up. Social relations are oiled and we start to feel as if small disputes, small discrepancies are a thing of the past and there's a more harmonious atmosphere both at work and in the home. And around April 20th, the sun comes into your workhouse Things are aligned and you're building up towards a beautiful new moon there, which is a great time to set intentions for the working year ahead. So that's around the 27th of April. Be mindful that you can really start something new, a new project at work. You can ground your intentions with your group, with your tribe, about where do you want to see your company going in the next year. Really, goal setting is so important, Leo, and especially for you because you take leadership so naturally and you always just feel, if I keep leading, everyone will follow, and indeed they will. But if you put a little bit of time and energy into figuring out where you want to go, then others will be even more inclined to follow and the money will come in. So this is the time. 28th, 29th, end of April is a really good time for goal setting for yourself with others at your job. During May, I see you very energized, Leo, because you have Mars going through your sign all of May and into half of June. And this is your time to be extra vital, extra energized, to assert yourself, to go out there to do things. A great time to be alive and there's a lot of action also with friends during this month you know you've got a new moon in the house of friendship you've got the Sun traveling through there so make some extra time for friends you generally are very generous of your time very warm-hearted this is a good month to hang out with friends and also you might find yourself especially around the new moon in that house of friendship in Gemini which is going to be right at the end of the month around the 27th you might find yourself either starting a special new friendship or 
hooking up with a new group, with a new organization that you really feel comfortable with. It could be something that is going to support your spiritual journey. It could be something that you have been drawn to for a long time and now you finally commit to. This is an important time, not least of all because Saturn, which we spoke about in the introduction, is making that big change of signs the day before the new moon around uh, the 26th of the month. So pay special attention what is going on in your life over these few days, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th of May. Saturn's moving into that house of philosophy expansion, wanting to be more than just trapped in your ordinary life. Someone is going to arrive to open the door for you. Put that out there. When the pupil is ready, the teacher arrives. And what else I could be seeing is that there are greater connections now with the international world. Maybe your business is going online. Maybe you starting to connect with people in other parts of the world using the internet. This is not a strange stranger to you, but it's really starting to all happen now. So I invite you to enjoy May because you have good energy and you're reaching out to others. You're making deep connections that can last for a very long time. June brings fantastic energy, Leo. So from the first of the month until around the seventh, you're continuing with the flow from May, absorbing that shift that we spoke about. And then around the seventh, great blessings from Venus in your house of work, especially if you work with food, with uh, medicines or apothecary or with fashion with art you're going to have some small blessings come in at that time it's a great time to you know buy that new wardrobe as well it, venus is feeling comfortable she's traveling through your house of work and there should be harmony in those areas of your life there's still a lot of energy for self-assertion available and that vitality we spoke of with Mars traveling through your sign and you'll definitely feel that shift after the 18th when it switches into your house of finances and you have energy to bring the money in. Just don't burn the money up as fast as it comes in. Other most important energy for June is the ingress of Jupiter. Ingress simply is the move of a planet into a new sign. So when Jupiter ingresses into the sign of Cancer, that's another time to pause and take stock of what's going on in your life. For you, Jupiter will be moving from your 11th solar house of friendships, where it's brought so much support for you over the last year, from June 24 to June 25. And it's now moving into that house of spirit that we spoke of in the introduction. So one of the effects this might bring is increased compassion, both for yourself and for others. Yes, there is time to let your hair down. And that's going to be at the full moon on the 11th. It's in Sagittarius. It's in your house of romance. It's in your house of children your house of creativity, your house of speculation. So go out there, have a night of wild gambling, go to a party, meet a girl, meet a guy, meet someone and have a lot of fun. And if you are a mother or a father looking after your kids, enjoy them. This is a fun night and it brings a beautiful fiery energy with which you resonate, Leo, because you too are a fire sign. And then the month quietens down with this solstice that happens on the 21st. Very important for you, Leo. Solstice is a time of great depth, great feeling. Your ruler, the sun, is honored. And this is a moment to take stock. 
and that's going to be followed by the new moon in Cancer which will be around the 25th of June and that's taking place in a quieter place of your chart. So time for reflection. You had the party, now you want to reflect again. See what's taking place. The new moon in Cancer is a really wonderful time to take a look, especially for you, what is taking place in my private life, in my quiet life, in my inner life. Do I want to start a journal? Do I want to get more in touch with these things that are driving me unconsciously? The first few days of July, you're asked to keep a calm head. Don't lose it. Don't shout at anyone at work. You know, there might be a lot of energy about. Try to use that to get on with your work and to channel it into these incredible projects that you've had on the back burner, Leo. And those are going to come into the spotlight, especially around the 5th when Venus enters that part of your chart that has to do with hopes and dreams and goals. I see you going to have the potential to put some of these dreams, put some of these hopes into practical action. Perhaps some a, a lady, someone is going to help you with that, someone that Venus represents. So be open and see what happens. And being open is really essential this month because around the 8th of the month is when that major ingress of Uranus into the sign of Gemini happens. Now, what does this mean for you, Leo? We spoke about how you've had this planet of change in your house of work for a long time, five years or so. Now it's moving into a new area that has to do with hopes, with goals, with friendships. Whatever you put down, you start to reach out for at this time. It's going to be established over the next few months. And then you're going to have to, it seems like, leave that for a while. You know, release it and let it pause and in April of 2026, you're going to return to whatever it is you starting between now and November. So please, in your calendars, make a note. What is going on the week of June 8th for you? So this is the money house, but it's the money we receive from work or the accolades or rewards or bonuses or promotions we receive from work. So there is the possibility for this to happen around this time between mid-June until November of 2025 and then again from April onwards where Uranus is going to be in Gemini all the way until 2033. So traveling through that area of your chart probably new ways for you to bring money in from work, new sources of income. Uranus is the technology planet. Are you exploring the development of an app for your business or the development of processes which can streamline your businesses? For all of us on the planet, this ingress of Uranus into Gemini is going to bring a huge enormous exponential change of the way we use media and technology and I know for most of us we cannot imagine that because we already feel as if we maxed out too much cell phone too much email too much tv but we will be finding as human beings new ways to use this energy and for you Leo it's going to help you in your business and also in your aspirations. It's entering into a very positive house for you. The full moon on the 10th of the month is important for a health check. This is the full moon. We all get one every year where you need to take stock. What is coming to fruition? What needs to be seen? 
Have you been dealing with a health issue which will now be resolved? And if your health is good and you don't have to worry about it in the slightest, what this full moon can bring about is a re-examination of what you're doing daily. Are you doing too much in your day? Are you doing too little so that you're unmotivated? Maybe you're working under your level. This full moon will bring those things up to be seen. Around the 18th of July, there's going to be a second Mercury slowdown. So Mercury will go retrograde. So if you are planning a party or a big event for your birthday, Leo, get everything done way before the 18th if you can. Because on that day and the few days afterwards, you're going to feel, first of all, an explosion of communication and then everything's going to go still. This is the time that we can have power outages or storms or all these kinds of things come up. Suddenly we don't have any uh, communication or it could be something as simple as the printer doesn't work, etc. You know what I'm talking about. It happens three times a year, every year. It's nothing overly dramatic. But because it's happening in your house, Leo, so in other words, the Mercury retrograde will be in Leo, you need to be extra mindful that all your communications are set up and you can take a break. That's what the planets are saying. They're saying, Leo and Leo rising, please try to take a break just before the sun comes into your sign, just before your birthday vitality comes in. Take that break around the 18th. Take a few days off work and don't get stressed with this slowdown in the communication planet. Around the 21st, the sun moves into Leo. Happy birthday. If you're a Leo ascendant, the sun is going to move into your ascendant, bringing renewed vitality and hope. And then, of course, you have your special new moon to celebrate and that will be on the 24th give or take a day on either side new moon in Leo what are your hopes what are your dreams for your entire year ahead because on your birthday new moon is the time that is very helpful to set some kind of resolution or vision for the next solar year around August 7 until September 21st, there's a shift from the action being mainly in your house of resources to the house of siblings, the house of commuting. Maybe you up for getting a new car. What's going on in that area? And it's going to be there all the way until September 21st. So plenty of time to plan a visit to see your brother, to invite your sister to stay, or just to get on the phone and check in with, with them. There's also energy for education, for learning. Are you a teacher? And are you suddenly starting to get busy and you know construct lesson plans for the new year? All these kinds of things come in the spotlight, August, September. The other energy you'll feel after that adjustment on the 7th is the full moon on the 9th, which is going to highlight you and your partner. This is a very important full moon for you, Leo. It's full moon in Aquarius, where you come up with these issues of me and my partner. Do I want a partner? How am I in relationship? How much am I prepared to give? So partnerships could be a business partnership, it could be your personal partnership, but they come under the spotlight at this time, so give them some attention. And two days after that, you're going to have the energy of communication opened up for you as Mercury starts to move forward and pick up speed again. So hopefully you've had some relaxation time during your birthday there's been a celebration, or if you're only celebrating now, enjoy it. Things will slowly start to ease forward, and you'll find yourself suddenly much busier again. So enjoy that little break. 
There will be that shift around the 22nd as the solar energy moves into a new sign. And we're also going to have a beautiful new moon in Virgo, which is going to reflect back for you to that full moon in Virgo that we spoke of, which took place around March 14th in the beginning of the year. So see what is happening and money may come in the spotlight, but also this is a time to check in again on how your self-worth is connected to your resources. Astrology makes this connection very clearly. It says that how we feel about ourselves is very much dependent on the amount of resources that we have. And these are not just financial resources. Resources is a very broad area. But we want to explore that connection at this time because there's going to be a second new moon, which is a solar eclipse in that same area. So pay attention to what is happening around the 23rd. And let's see what comes up for you at this time. It could be something good to do with finances or resources. New moons can set new intentions and you can turn over a whole new leaf at this time. Then August ends, we have around the 26th of the month, Lady Venus enters your sign and brings a beautiful blessing to you. Whenever Venus is in your sign, you feel at your most beautiful and it's a time to shine. It's a time to be out there. So enjoy that, Leo. Leo, the month of September is very energized, mostly because we have some eclipses taking place again. And these work to bring up energy. So if anything in your life is hidden or repressed, this eclipse energy brings it to the surface to be seen, to be healed. And when September gets underway, there's also a suggestion that you should not be suppressing things because Mars is traveling through a place in your chart through a sign that is prone to doing that, to suppressing something, for example, irritation with somebody, and then it's repressed for so long that it finally comes out in a very negative way, in a much more negative way than if it had been expressed very simply, very cleanly early on. And that could be happening in the relationship with one of your family members. So I invite you to be mindful how you express negativity and not to repress things. The very big blessing for September is between the 3rd and the 18th things look good for you financially. You've got a great deal of energy that's taking place in that house. And that's also a good window to upgrade your software, your hardware, your cell phones, and so on. We get a couple of windows every year for that. So if you are in the market for a new car, for a new smartphone, for a new television, a new laptop, a new iPad, that's your time when we purchase equipment when Mercury is strong and swift. We tend to have very few issues with the equipment and we don't have to go through those painful troubleshooting and returns uh, with, with hardware. Also a great time to upgrade software and this area is really highlighted for you, you know, spending money, dealing with communication, all those areas, you will know how to apply this to your own life, Leo, because this is where the full moon and the new moon are going to take place, straddling those two areas of your chart. So we could not be talking about your money, Evan. We could be talking about your spouse's money or money that you share with others, 
So for example, a real estate that is being inherited by several siblings in the family and now all of a sudden it's come into the spotlight and it needs to be divided up or to be looked at. So the full moon in Pisces around the 7th is going to bring that up. It's a total lunar eclipse. Look at shared values, look at shared finances, look at something that needs to be addressed in that area. And you may also find yourself, if none of this seems applicable, harking back to that new moon in Pisces that we spoke of in February where you were sitting in your hammock and dreaming and maybe those dreams and ambitions and goals and hopes are now coming in the spotlight and someone is going to show up to support you and to enable you to bring that goal to fruition or to work on that hope to really understand how to bring that to fruition. We also have an important solar event on the 22nd of September, which is the equinox. Day and night are almost equal and your ruler, the sun, is really brought into the spotlight at this time. So for you, it's a day to spend some quiet time alone and to reflect, is there equilibrium in your own life, Leo? What is lacking? Are you lonely? Do you need to go out there and find a friend? Or are you too much in a relationship where it's taken over everything? Do you need more balance? Are you working too hard? Do you need more work? So look at your life on this day and figure out how to be more in tune, in balance. And the new moon solar eclipse will be occurring just before that equinox. So that's in that house of finances, the house in your chart that is ruled by Virgo. And you wanna take a look at your personal resources at this time and once again, eclipses bring up energy. The energy itself is neither good nor bad. It all depends on how you're living your life and what needs to come up in order to be seen. On September 22nd, action planet Mars is going to move into your house of the home and this is bringing positive energy there. It's going to energize the home the family, one of your parents, endings and new beginnings all the way until the end of October. So if you have to do renovations, this is a great time. Late September, all of October. Family member wants to come and stay, this is the time. You might find yourself putting in a new water fountain. You might find yourself dealing with plumbing that you've been putting off and you've actually proactively chosen this window because you know that the issue is going to be resolved swiftly and well at this time. Regardless of what takes place in the home, it's energy. So there's energy in the home for those six weeks. Make the most of it. There's not too much to say about October other than that you may be dealing with the fallout of the eclipses, especially at the beginning part of October, if they were very powerful for you. And remember, you have your individual charts, so you need to check them and see if there's any planets that are activated directly by those eclipses, because that's when they are most powerful. Otherwise, they can just be general and activate the area of life to do with the house in which they fall in. So for you, October is, you know, starting off with that, you're dealing with issues, possibly with financial issues or issues with other people's money. Maybe your partner is having some kind of financial concern that you need to support them with. Around the 6th, there's a beautiful full moon taking place in a positive area of your life. 
it's going to bring up things about that spirit world again. But it's not the spirituality where you quiet behind your doors. It's that kind of energy where you want to get out there and travel, broaden your horizons. So who knows, you might be going on a trip at this time. And if you're not, I encourage you to do some mind chair travel. Get out a book, watch a film, do something that really invites you to step into a new world. That's what it's all about. And from the 14th of September onwards is a lovely time for beauty and romance because for the second time this year, Venus will be comfortable in a sign where she is favored. She can bring about romance. She can bring about harmony. So if you're interested in finding someone new, this is a good three to four weeks for dating and basically also a good time for a makeover, for redoing decor, any of those practical things that we want to work in alignment with the planets on. There will be a new moon in Libra on the 21st of the month that's taking place in your local house. So a good time to, if you're a writer, this is a good time to get some writing done and to also initiate a new project. Things are fresh, things are moving, things are active there. And the sun will move into Scorpio around the 23rd and that is your solar house of the home, Leo. So as you know, every year at this time, focus goes in onto the home, it's a great time to take a few days off work and actually spend some time at home. And this is mirrored by Mercury entering into your house of children right at the end of October. So energizing that area, you want to spend time with your kids. It's a positive time. If you don't have children, beautiful time for creativity, for pleasure, going out for a meal with a friend, romance, you name it. The full moon of November 5th is very noteworthy for you, Leo, because it's going to take place in your house of work. So whenever we have a full moon, there's a lot of energy or light that is shone on that area of our chart. And this is an interesting day because Mars is also switching signs around the 5th of November. So you're going to feel that adjustment. Something is coming to light at work. Something is coming to fruition. Maybe it's a project you've been working on all year and now it's finally coming to completion. Or perhaps if you're not working, we could be seeing your status is changing. Are you getting married, Leo? That's so exciting. Are you getting engaged? Are you getting your citizenship to a new country? What's happening that's bringing that to fruition? Mars is entering that area of your chart that has to do again with children, with creativity, with romance. And it's positive for you because we've got the Mars energy forming a fire trine to your sun, bringing you energy, enlivening whatever is going on there. There's also Mercury retrograding in that area. So I'm seeing maybe children are coming back to you, children who are in college, they're coming for a visit, maybe for Thanksgiving, or you've got a romantic partner that you broke up with them and now the relationship is back on track. It's returning to you. Let's see what happens, Leo. All I would say that if you do speculate, if you gamble, if you play the markets hard, be very aware of that full moon. There's going to be a lot of activity there with the switch of Mars, with the Mercury retrograde around the early part of November and with the full moon in Taurus. The other noteworthy event, which can also affect the markets actually, is Uranus moving retrograde on the 9th. And how does this affect you, Leo? It affects you by 
reminding you that there's still projects you need to finish off. These may be projects at work that you started in 2018 or 19, or it might be a cycle of topsy-turviness that came into work around that time, forcing you to be more adaptable, to be more adjustable, to switch positions, to switch jobs. So you're finishing off that cycle now, November to April. So fasten your seatbelt and prepare for that drive. It's going to be with you so that you can really see it to the bitter end. And when April comes around, you will be released from that and we start to deal with other energies, with groups and so on. Be aware of what you're doing on that week of November 9th. It's an important time and we feel an adjustment always when we have one of these slow moving planets changing direction or seeming to change direction from Earth. There's a new moon in the house of the home for you that's near the end of the month and we also have Venus there but she's not particularly active at this time so I could see you being quiet at home. You know there's been so much activity in the first part of the month so as the month comes to an end with this new moon, maybe a quieter time for you, Leo. And we also, of course, have the sun moving into Sagittarius around the 22nd. That's going to bring positive energy again into children, into creative projects. If you're an artist, what a great time. You know, maybe you're getting on the stage. This is positive, positive energy. And the month will end off, month of November, with Mercury moving forward again. So if you've had your Thanksgiving holiday, now it's time to go back to work. And it's all systems go from then on. For the first part of December, things are looking really great once again to do with babies, children, and all those relaxation things that we like to do going to the theater going to the movie going to the having dinner with a friend whatever it is that you love it's going to be a good start to december interestingly in the second part of december work is on your mind so perhaps you're someone that does work well during that time you know some industries are very much favored and I see things getting busy for you, especially after the full moon in Gemini, that's on the 4th, that's in your house of rewards from work. And then around the 16th, there's going to be a real shift into action. That shift towards work orientation that takes place around the 16th sees you going back into a more routine orientated lifestyle after you've had a few weeks of greater flexibility. So maybe you working, putting your nose to the grindstone, even if you're not working, there's a lot that you suddenly have to take care of. And it's fine, you know, you want this, you love this work. Some of you are earning very, very good money in December. So make the most of it. You're going to have a new moon that ends off the year, which is very beautiful for you, Leo. So in spite of the fact that you might be working or you might be busy, maybe a lot of gift certificates are coming in or you have a lot of clients that you need to help out during this time, you're going to have this feeling of being able to relax around the 20th of the month. And that should be a time or a day that you take off work around that new moon. It's a fire moon. It's a moon in Sagittarius. It will be in affinity with your sun. And it's in a place where you really get to recharge and just put your feet up for a day. And then it's again, all systems go through the holidays and on into the new year. So it seems like there is so much to look forward to for this year. There's a taste of 
huge change but as the year comes to an end it's as if you've given that opportunity to review things and to finish up a cycle that's been going on for a couple of years for you Leo. Best of luck for the year Leo. Please like, subscribe, write me a comment and I will see you next time.